Hello, everyone, and a welcome back to Ignite. I'm Joy Chick, and I lead the Identity and the Network Access Division at Microsoft. We build services that secure access to everything for everyone across your multi-cloud digital estate. It has been another intense year. From the ongoing pandemic to the great reshuffle to economic uncertainty, while cyber attacks continue to escalate, it has truly felt like the only constant is change. And the challenges are not going away. They just keep evolving. In this economy, many organizations are looking for opportunities to do more with less. And the security teams are no doubt being asked to do the same. In other words, while threats have never been higher, you have fewer resources to work with. So what do you do? People think of IT security as defense. But what if we play offense with our defense? Do more with less does not have to mean hardship. Not if you change your game. You can take do more with less as a mandate to go on the offense. And this is a strategy I want to talk about today. Earlier this year, we introduced our new product family, Microsoft Entra, to help you take this kind of proactive approach to security. We're building Microsoft Entra as a trust fabric for the digital ecosystem that connects people, machines, microservices, and things. And you can explore, collaborate, and experiment without fear. Microsoft Entra includes all of Microsoft's identity and access capabilities. It has Azure AD, as well as our new Cloud Infrastructure Entitlement Management product called Entra Permissions Management, and Entra Verified ID, our decentralized identity product. Today, we'll talk about three ways you can use Microsoft Entra to improve efficiency and the lower overall costs while strengthening security. First, consolidate solutions to eliminate whatever is unnecessary. Second, make the most what you already own. And third, adopt the latest security innovations to protect against evolving threats. Your first opportunity is to consolidate point solutions and vendors. This means evaluating the tools that you are using and the value you are getting from them. The first question to ask is, do you have everything you need? Do your tools protect all of your infrastructure or only part of it? The next question is, do you need everything you have? Can you retire any redundant tools? Here's one area of frustration we often hear about from customers traditional identity governance solutions. These solutions do not scale to cloud and hybrid environments. Plus, you need to integrate them with your access management tools. And after doing all that work, are you truly confident that the right people have the right access to the right resources? No one wants to keep throwing money at a solution that is not really working for them. But identity governance is critical. And this is why we have been building identity governance features into Azure AD, such as entitlement management, access reviews, and the lifecycle management. But we know we need to address a broader range of use cases. So today, I'm happy to announce that we now have a complete cloud identity governance product, Microsoft Entra Identity Governance. This cloud-delivered service includes capabilities already available in Azure AD. And now we have added more advanced tools that simplify identity management and governance. First, Lifecycle Workflows is entering public preview. You can use this feature to customize workflows and automate repetitive tasks, such as onboarding new employees and then clean up when employees leave. Second, separations of duties is now generally available 
as part of the entitlement management feature. This capability automates checks and other controls to ensure identities do not get excessive access. For example, requiring more than one person to be involved in a transaction reduces the risk of fraud. Entry identity governance also supports provisioning your on-premises applications. If you are using Microsoft Identity Manager, you can reuse your existing connector configuration to make migration easy. Now, I would like to invite Caitlin and Christina to show you these new capabilities in action. Thanks, Joy. Governance is definitely not something you want to leave to your future self. There are still too many accounts with unnecessary admin rights and too many accounts with access to resources they no longer need. Bad actors want to find the account that has access to critical apps and systems. That's why it's important to limit people's access to only what they need. Any organizational change creates risk, but it doesn't have to. Lifecycle workflows helps you automate best practices for minimizing risk. Yeah, Caitlin, that's exactly right. Here's how this works in a new employee scenario. Today is Vance's first day at Woodgrove. Let's see how Lifecycle Workflows and Microsoft Intra helps him be productive right away. Vance just signed into his new device with the username and temporary access pass he got from his manager this morning. He's now ready to sign into Outlook. Lifecycle Workflows automatically sent this email containing all the info he needs to get started. This includes a link to My Apps, the one stop shop where end users like Vance can find and sign into all the apps they need to be productive. As a member of the sales team, he only has rights to apps assigned to him by the sales executive's access package, which includes Salesforce. Ah, but he gets a message from his manager asking him to focus on a specific account first. Check this out. The relevant customer data automatically populates from the new Microsoft Viva sales apps, so he saves time. Right within Microsoft Teams or Outlook, sellers get customer details from Microsoft Dynamics 365 or Salesforce. So here's the proposed contract to help close the sale. He decides to increase Tailspin's discount rate, but he doesn't have the permissions to make this change. So Vance goes back to the welcome email and selects the My Access link. Maybe getting access to the sales administrator's access package will give him the permissions to change the discount rate. Now he's going to request access and make it happen, right? Oh no, his request is instantly rejected. Compliance policies control who can make changes and why. Lifecycle workflows add advance to a number of Teams channels during onboarding. So Vance opens Microsoft Teams to find someone to help. He sends a message asking for help updating Tailspin's discount rate. His manager responds with a link to a Power App that lets him request approval to access the sales administrator's access package. An easier first day of work, thanks to Lifecycle Workflows. Now let's see how entitlement management in Microsoft Entra granted Vance the access he needed on his first day. Mike is the Woodgrove IT admin responsible for onboarding hundreds of employees each week. Using Microsoft Entra, she easily created access packages for new employees like Vance, so they receive only the access their department requires. In the catalog, she configured the sales executives access package to ensure that sales executives automatically get access to Salesforce. She also configured the sales administrators access package to allow assigned users to modify customer records. Next, to minimize the risk of fraud, she needed to prevent sales executives from automatically getting access to the sales administrator's access package. So she configured separation of duties. Vance's initial request to join was automatically rejected because Maya required manual approval of all requests to be added to the sales administrator's group. With lifecycle workflows, IT admins like Maya can quickly configure built-in templates to automate onboarding activities for hundreds of employees at once. Let's see how Maya did this. First, using the pre-hire onboarding template, Maya created a custom workflow that based on the employee's start date, generates a temporary access pass, sends an email to the new employee's manager, and adds the employee to the sales channel in Teams. 
Maya created a separate custom workflow to automate onboarding tasks for newly hired sales employees. This workflow enables the user's account and sends a welcome mail on their first day. Seven days before Vance started, the workflow automatically sent a temporary access pass to his manager, Lisa. This email also served as a reminder that Vance would be joining soon. So Christina, if I've got this right, here's what happened. Woodgrove used lifecycle workflows to automate the entire process of onboarding Vance, including an auto-generated temporary access pass and a welcome email. And then once Vance was onboarded, entitlement management made it possible for him to manage his own access requests within safeguards put in place by separation of duties. Just think of all the time saved when somebody joins a company or changes roles. Yeah, Caitlin, that's exactly right. Multiply that by every employee, that's a massive savings. Thank you, Caitlin and Christina. Again, Lifecycle Workflows is in public preview today. I encourage you to try it. Consolidating tools is a great way to cut costs and create efficiencies. Another crucial strategy is to extract more value out of the solutions you already own. This is an easy path to quick wins, especially if you reduce your legacy on-premise footprints in the process. In the Microsoft Entry family, Azure AD is our hero cloud identity product. Most of you already own it but we are regularly surprised when customers do not realize everything it does. Even the free version that comes with any Microsoft commercial subscription includes critical capabilities like single sign-on, multi-factor authentication, security defaults, and the role-based access control. You can modernize your identity management by taking full advantage of everything Microsoft Entra has to offer. This will pay off in ways that you can actually measure. 45% fewer data breaches, 50% reduction in identity management effort, and 75% fewer password reset costs. As always, I encourage you to connect your applications to Azure AD so your users gain all the benefits of Microsoft Entra, including single sign-on, conditional access, and identity protection. Connecting your applications also takes you one step closer to retiring your on-premises ADFS infrastructure. We know that some of you have been using ADFS for a long time, and that moving off it is not as simple as flipping a switch. But ADFS has become a primary attack vector, and if you are still on ADFS, you are missing out on the advanced security features that come with modern cloud-based identity management. In the past year, we have added more than 20 capabilities to ensure that anything you can do with ADFS, you can do with Azure AD. For example, certificate-based authentication is critical for customers in regulated industries. This includes US federal agencies, which must deploy phishing-resistant MFA to comply with White House Executive Order on Cybersecurity. Well, today I'm pleased to announce that certificate-based authentication is now generally available in Microsoft Entra. And this removes the last major blocker for those of you who want to move all of your identities to the cloud. We have also delivered a robust set of self-serve or partner-led tools to help you assess and plan your migration from ADFS. Plus, while giving you a way to requiring phishing-resistant authentication methods and a turn-off methods that are less secure. So let's invite Caitlin, Vermilla, and Matt to show you what some of these tools can do for you. Thanks, Joy. Certificate-Based Authentication, or CBA, enables users to use an XDAP 509 certificate for authenticating to Azure AD directly. So now you can have CBA without having to manage on-premise infrastructure, including federated servers like ADFS. This is great for those of you who have to comply with the US White House Executive Order on Cybersecurity. Vimala, can an admin enable and configure CBA in the Microsoft Intra Admin Center? Oh, that's so easy now. To set up certificate-based authentication, 
Maya, the Woodgrove admin, just needs to follow a few simple steps. The first step is to upload all the certificate authorities in the certificate chain. Maya uploads the certificate authority for the Woodgrove tenant. Woodgrove is transitioning from federation with ADFS to cloud authentication. Maya uses the stage rollout approach to control the pace of migration. Once stage rollout is complete, Maya can switch the entire tenant to cloud authentication. This way, any new user can use cloud authentication by default. The next step is to enable and configure CBA. In the Microsoft Entra Admin Center under Authentication Methods, Maya clicks on Certificate Based Authentication. She can enable it for all users or only a selected set of users and group. To increase security, Maya changes the default to multi-factor authentication. The last step is to configure username binding. Maya accepts the default and saves the policy. Now that Woodgrove is set up to use certificate-based authentication, Maya wants to turn off SMS authentication as it's less secure. There is a group of users who still needs to use SMS authentication. So she switches it off for other users. Salesforce is one of Woodgrove's most important and sensitive application. Through the use of conditional access policy, Maya wants to require phishing resistant authentication methods to access Salesforce without affecting other applications. Maya creates a new conditional access policy using the authentication strength capability now in public preview. She'll require specific authentication methods based on application, user risk, location, and more. Now that Salesforce is configured to require phishing resistant authentication methods, users can sign in using CBA, FIDO2, or Windows Hello for Business. Now let's see how easy it is to sign in. To sign in with a smart card, brands would simply insert a smart card, enter the PIN, and Azure AD would authenticate him directly. Fans could also sign into an app using on-device certificate. Here's an example of Vance signing into the Teams app on an Android device. It's really that simple. Remember when Maya required phishing resistant authentication method to access Salesforce app? Let's see what happens when Vance tries to sign in. Vance uses his password and push notification to sign in. When he launches Salesforce app, he's required to use FIDO2, a phishing resistant authentication method. So now you can require strong authentication methods for signing into specific applications. And this goes beyond just requiring MFA, which, by the way, everybody should be doing. The combination of authentication policies and CBA helps you comply with specific regulatory requirements, including the US executive order. Once you have enabled and configured CBA, your users can authenticate against Azure AD using smart card or on-device certificates. All Microsoft applications support CBA with Azure AD as do non-Microsoft application that uses latest Microsoft authentication libraries. If you've been using ADFS for CBA, you can now get all the benefits of cloud native authentication. And we have some tools to help with your ADFS migration planning. Matt will walk us through those. As you know, your first step is to make an inventory of all your applications, then figure out which ones can migrate and which ones need work first. Here's how we're making this easier for you. Under Monitoring and Health, you'll find Azure AD Connect Health for ADFS. Not only does it monitor your ADFS connection status, such as uptime, certificates, anomalous logons, et cetera, what's interesting is how it can help you plan your app migration from ADFS to Azure AD. Here you can see which apps in my environment that are using ADFS. The number of sign-ins help you understand app usage, so you decide which apps to migrate first. 
On the far right under migration status, ready indicates the app can be migrated. This means that the app is already compatible with Azure AD. If the status says additional steps required, this means that one or more of the 16 configuration checks require review. Fixing this may be as simple as adjusting a setting, or it may be as complex as refactoring a claim rule. As you develop your app migration plan, start with the apps that are ready to be migrated, and you can move these apps to Azure AD today. Once the configurations are in Azure AD, you could do the official cutover one app at a time at your own pace. So that's how Connect Health makes it a little easier for you to plan and execute your ADFS migration. Back to you, Joy. Thank you, Caitlin, Pamela, and Matt. Again, certificate-based authentication in Microsoft Entra is now generally available. We have detailed step-by-step -step guidance available. So you can join the wave of organizations migrating off of ADFS for good. Consolidating your identity solutions and then making the most of your tools will certainly help you do more with less in the near term. But the cyber attacks are always evolving. So how will you stay ready? There's an old saying that an ounce of prevention is worth a pound of cure. In security speaking, this means invest in systems that will stay ahead of evolving attack vectors. Take, for instance, workload identities. Identity systems were designed to manage human identities. But workloads also need to be authenticated and authorized so they can access cloud resources and communicate with other workloads. They need identities too. And these identities need to be secured and managed without a clearly defined joiner, mover, lever cycle. Workload identities are less visible, and therefore, they are undermanaged compared to human identities. This is dangerous, because attackers who compromise a workload identity can move laterally inside a victim's environment. In a study we did earlier this year, we found that 68% of workloads have access to sensitive data and assets. And this is a huge problem. How huge? Since 2019, the number of workload identities in Microsoft Entra has more than tripled. Non-human identities now outnumber human identities 5 to 1. And within five years, this ratio will be 20 to 1. To help secure your workloads, I'm pleased to announce that Microsoft Entra workload identities will be generally available in November. It helps you to control access detect risks, and simplify the access lifecycle for workloads with less predictable behavior patterns. And that's right. We are extending advanced capabilities such as conditional access and identity protection to workload identities. It is the same system, the same UI, and the same framework that you are already familiar with. This means you can now apply the same zero trust principles two workloads. And to show you more, I would like to invite Caitlin and Eitan to take a deep dive. As Joy said, non-human identities are proliferating. We need to apply the same principles to workload identities that we already apply to human identities. But first, admins need visibility into the permissions that workload identities already have to understand what's at risk, and then apply advanced security capabilities to automatically address these gaps. Thanks, Caitlin. Let's check back with Maya, the Woodgrove IT administrator. To manage her workload identities, Maya starts by creating a new policy in the conditional access blade. She can select workload identities and specify the scope, all applications or just a specific set. To select a specific set, she can search for one or more workload identities in the menu. But she decides to start by applying this policy to all apps so she can evaluate the results before she officially enables the policy. Now for the conditions. Instead of manually reviewing logs to try and spot anomalies, she can change how she plays the game. She can set a policy that automatically blocks access when the system detects something outside the norm. To do this, she selects service principal risk and specifies which risk levels should trigger a block control. 
Maya can also create a location-based policy for workload identities by first setting up trusted locations for the data center and then setting the access policy to block access from outside that trusted location. This is yet another key step to making sure the right accounts have the right access to the right resources. In fact, it's one of those set and forget opportunities. As long as those apps are hosted at those locations, Maya can move on to other priorities. The policy will take care of the rest. Maya has set up this policy in report only mode, so it will log what the access control results would be if the policy were live. She can then use conditional access insights and reporting to get full visibility on policy behavior. The report will tell her which workload identities would have successfully signed in, which ones her policies would have blocked, and which ones were out of scope. A few days later, Maya checks the identity protection blade to see if any workload identities are at risk. She notices a new blade called Risky Workload Identities. This report shows any applications or services that identity protection has flagged for risk. The risk detections blade gives her more details, including when the risk was detected, the detection type, and the risk level. Based on this report, she decides to run an access review to determine which workload identities may have an unnecessary privileged role. Attestation, a key part of identity governance, helps Maya do more with less. There's no way for her to know everything about every workload running in the environment, so she decides to delegate review to the right people. As Maya sets up the review, she notices she can set the recurrence cycle to quarterly. This way, she won't have to worry about remembering to do this again in 90 days. Under role, Maya starts with the global admin role, but she notices that she can choose any combination of roles to review. Then she selects which reviewers should reattest access for these workload identities. This can either be a set of individual users or one or more groups. When reviewers choose to deny access to a given workload identity, Maya can automatically revoke permissions. If reviewers don't respond to the access review, she can set the policy to follow system-generated recommendations based on sign-in data. This is another great example of the platform helping Maya make data-driven security decisions while saving precious time and effort. Thank you, Caitlin and Atom. Again, Microsoft Workload Identities is generally available in November. Now you can protect your workload identities using the same tools you use to protect human identities. This will really strengthen your defenses. A solid defense gives you the confidence to play offense. Now is your opportunity to play offense using the strategies we have outlined today. Play offense by consolidating solutions to eliminate whatever you do not need. This will simplify your environment and reduce costs associated with licensing, integration, maintenance, and training. Play offense by modernizing your identity infrastructure and moving everything you can to the cloud, including migrating off of ADFS. Then take full advantage of everything in the solutions you own so you can reduce the risk and the cost of security incidents. Play offense by proactively adopting the latest security innovations so you can stay ahead of evolving threats. The stronger your protection, the less time and money you will spend on remediating any future security problems. Even in this tough environment with so many challenges, I'm confident you will achieve amazing results. And I hope that the innovations in Microsoft Entra will help you to secure access to everything for everyone. Thank you and have a great Ignite.